Hey everyone, today what we are going to do is take a look at the STM board that we are going to uh, you know, introduce and do some experimentations on, do examples on and tutorials on moving forward. Uh, what we'll do as of today is take a look at what that board is and what are the different components of it and you know, essentially get familiar with the board. Uh, Rajat, do you want to go ahead and maybe introduce the board? Yes, uh, so the board that we are going to use uh... Uh, is a STM thirty four discovery? Do you uh, want to? Sh you happen to have that? Yeah, I have okay. that. Just, just a moment. So, just a moment. <laughs> Let's put you. Where are you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the board. So that's this the board. The board. Okay. And it's look quite similar to the one in the document that we are going to show. Just the blue color change. <laughs> yes. Yes. So let yes. me so, then. Uh, uh, it's the same it. board. Just a, yes. a color of the PCB is changed. Yes. And so we have the board on the screen. Yeah. And so uh, first I would like to emphasize why did we selected the STM32 F4 platform? So around two months back, we did a survey on LinkedIn and mm -hmm. uh, asking people which is the most common platform they have they have used as a maker, etc., and which they feel is very accessible in India. And mm -hmm. STM32 won by a huge margin. It was like 70% votes for STM32. And okay. that's where we decided to go for STM32. Mm -hmm. It's not like we have a background in STM32. I come from Microchip, the rival company. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Would have loved to use, reuse some of my work. <laughs> nah, <laughs> fair, fair, but fair. I guess a lot of, and I understand the reason why. So accessibility is a big issue in India when we talk about mm -hmm. board accessibility. And a lot of hardware is not very easily accessible. Uh, fortunately, this uh, this uh, uh, board is accessible on Amazon and a lot of vendors in India mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you don't have to rely on element 14 etc and import it mm -hmm. and do all that custom work etc it's already imported right. and you can buy it directly in India right and I suppose for people you know outside of India also it should be readily available yes uh, so this is a very readily available and uh, it has it is not in end of its life hmm pretty STM actively used selling yeah. a lot of it <laughs> yes. so that's yeah. a, uh, so that was one of the reasons to choose the stm32 platform but why specifically this board so mm -hmm. stm32 has a lot of uh, platforms it was nucleo uh, there is a nuclear platform there is a discovery platform uh, even though this platform is a bit older than nucleo the reason mm -hmm. we decided to choose this was because we are located in india and it was much readily uh, readily available in india and yeah. the second, the board has almost all the peripherals on it, all mm -hmm. the external components on it that can be used to demonstrate a peripheral use case. Right, right. So, so we're pretty going much stand to that board a bit, and then we'll talk about those components as well. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Do you want to introduce different parts on this board? Yeah. So when we talk about this board, there are two ends of this board. Uh, you will see a USB mini on the top and a micro USB on the bottom. Uh, the mini USB, uh, if you, you can draw a straight line at that www.stm.com. Anything above that is a debugger interface. So the board comes with an embedded debugger. So there you don't have to buy a debugger separate. There's a STM link already on board and you can mm -hmm. use it to debug your applications using STM32 IDE. Right. And the debugger comes over there and that mini usb is used to connect to the uh, connect to the laptop in, uh, laptop or to the host side right host meaning the linux it's, environment it's, it's or a the bit windows outdated for me that there is a mini usb over there but it's okay yeah <laughs> now it's actually there. it's it's even outdated that we have micro usbs it's so difficult to get micro usbs as well nowadays yeah <laughs> since it's all usb c but yeah. I think nobody is going back and modifying old boards for users' accessibility. Right, right. Because it makes no sense. <laughs> right. So uh, one of the reason is uh, so anything below that is a is the your main microcontroller. The board contains a mic uh, the STM thirty two F four F four zero seven VGT six microcontroller, which is this. Which is this. Uh, the microcontroller is good enough for you have plenty of peripherals. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a good, a good number of UARTs, good number of SPI and good numbers of I2C so that if you want to 
reset in some kind of uh, IoT project or some kind of project, you have enough peripheral connectivity available to you. So you mm -hmm. don't have to buy this board just to follow up, follow along with us. You right. can buy the board to do any kind of experiments. And this board will suffix all your needs for the basic level of uh, basic project IoT projects. Right, right, right. And so uh, again, you, uh, just just a moment, uh, Rajat. So when we are saying IoT project, uh, we have to mention that uh, this doesn't have Wi-Fi. It doesn't and, have Wi-Fi. Yeah, it doesn't have Bluetooth uh, yeah. on it. And you know those chips can be connected. The external like. ESP32 module, something like that, can be connected over UART or SPI or whatever, right? Yes, Some exactly. Right. right. So there's no so, on-chip or on-board Wi-Fi along with this. Yes. And also maybe just to reiterate, this happens to be an Cortex M4, M4 right? Yes. M4F based, which M4 means it has its own floating point unit as well. So you can do floating point math. And M4 is, well, any M class chip represents pretty much all of M class uh, yes. variants, right? M3, M4, maybe M7, M0. If you know how to work with this, pretty much you know how to work with them with slight variation. Right? Yes. OK, perfect. Go ahead. So looking at the board, the second uh, good thing about the board is that it brings almost all the pins that are available on the MCU onto the headers. Headers being this. So you can just take this board, take a breadboard and put this board on the breadboard and you have access to almost all the pins of the microcontroller. Oh, can, can we put this board on the breadboard? Uh, yes, so it has a reverse uh, header. So this fit within the breadboard. I Oh, just a moment. Let me let me put you on the main screen. Yeah, so uh, you so have reverse, you have headers on both back and front. Correct. So this can I go see. right away into the breadboard. But doesn't the breadboard, uh, I mean, wouldn't the two pins short with each other? I think maybe it doesn't go directly on it. Let me just. Yeah, it doesn't you. go directly onto it. Ah, OK, OK. There might be some expansion header that you can use too. Yes. What I was what I was thinking of is on a breadboard, these two pins, for example. Will, yeah, so will this is short. serial connection right now, right? So yeah. this, this will get shorted out. Yeah. But yeah but yes anyways you can uh, it's easy to put it over over something and then yeah you can Fair. have extensions for this Fair. yes okay so expansion boards are available uh, much like how board. they are for Arduino. okay cool right let's go ahead what else so all yeah. pins so, are being majority print pins are being brought out as headers ports here yeah okay and then you have around four user leds so if you want to do any kind of uh, fancy LED chaser demos as well, that is right. visible as well. Right. And, uh, you know, LEDs are important uh, as for mm -hmm. me because they are the like the first visual. In, uh, so let's say I want a visual indication on this board. How can I have a visual indication? Right. The best visual indication that the board is alive is getting a LED to turn on or blink. Right. So some sort of like a heartbeat. heartbeat. Uh, signal can be brought out on the LEDs. So we have four of those. And uh, what else? So the I see. Button. Yes. So I see that there are the blue one is the user button and that's a reset. OK, this is the reset. This is the reset. OK, and this is the user button. OK. And okay. Uh, a bit and just coming for the advanced users, let's say if you are a bit of an advanced user and uh, you like your classic debuggers like J-Link, etc., uh, mm -hmm. the board also has an external SWD connector. Yes, which I see is here. Yes. So you can connect your external debugger. All you have to do is switch those G uh, jumpers that are named mm -hmm. ST-Link and Discovery. Yes. So you, uh, when you take them out, uh, your uh, pins are uh, free for the debugger to use. I see. Okay, so when these pins are like shorted here or connected, then this is getting used. The US, yes, this path is getting used. And when these are, so these are disconnected, uh, these are disconnected, then this path will get used. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, that sounds good. And then what are the kind of experiments or 
you know projects or tutorial examples we want to so uh, uh you know a, a lot of our uh, you know audience uh, talk about that they want to learn communication peri- uh, communication protocols on it mm-hmm. so majority of the communication protocols that we are going to talk about are uart spi and i2c mm-hmm. and maybe in future uh you know because we need uh, because it's not a very small communication protocol we will do something on usb fair but this is in future maybe we should also throw in uh, does this have can by any chance i don't uh, think this so has can and lin interface as well this this has yeah okay wow i'm surprised so there is also can i was kind of reading about can yesterday it would be fun if we can throw in something yeah. related so uh, i will check again back on can Lin, sure. I know there's a, there's something on Lin on this uh, Lin on this uh, MCU. Can mm-hmm. I need to check? But coming from a background, most of the MCUs I have seen them coming up with some Can interface in them. I see. Okay. okay. And uh, I need I would like to say that it uh, you have written I two S. Oh, sorry, I two C. I two I two C. And we can also do I two S as well. Yes, on- yes. I two S is uh, you know another story, but. Yeah, I do because see. this uh, this chip has a codec on it. I see. So it also has an audio uh, codec. audio codec. So we can actually do if we want ever want to do an advanced demo of audio processing. Nice. We can uh, do that complete. We can uh, send a complete. We can process a complete song on USB. You know, digital USB. Yeah. Digital yeah. audio and uh, then uh, use the codec to play a song. You know, Fair. do some fancy MP3 kind sure. of thing. I would be very much interested if we can pull off a DSP related use case or example. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm actually you know typing where it may not be visible to people. So yeah, yeah. this is what I <laughs> was typing. DSP would so, be fun. Yeah. yeah. So there is a they, so uh, in the basic demos, what we are going to cover is timers. Okay. Uh, they are critical. Mm-hmm. Timers, UART. Okay. I to C. Okay. SPI. Okay. DMA. And ADC and DAC. Right. So we yeah, have pretty much all the basics are covered, right? Yeah. So if you are just getting started with embedded and want to learn very basics, I think this should cover ninety percent of your needs. Yes. And for professionals like uh, who are very advanced in their career and want to learn something new, we may in future cover I2S and USB. Right. And these are like so I2S things. being a very and can obviously can is there. Fair. Right. Also, you know, not to forget that with all of these, there would also be obviously interrupts. Interrupts. <laughs> Right. So we'll demo how and GPIOs. <laughs> oh, oh, and GPIOs, yes. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a neat thing. So again, maybe can we run through different parts on the board again? Just yeah. so like I, I will, I will uh, just give an uh, intuition of what all is connected to what. So mm, sure. when we talk about UART, there's nothing actually connected to UART. Uh, mm. So usually what you find in most of the debuggers, uh, when you have an embedded debugger, they usually connect a UART line directly mm-hmm. from the debugger and debugger enumerates as a complex USB device where it is both debugger and UART, mm. you know, CDC interface, yes. communication device class interface. Uh, but there's a limitation on this device where the UART pins from the microcontroller are not connected to STM link. Right. So you either need an external USB to UART converter that you can mm-hmm. connect to, I guess, line number PA4 and PA5, mm-hmm. which is UART1, UART2 interface. Okay. Or you can take, you can solder these pins uh, mm-hmm. to the STM link. So there is yes. a UART, there are UART pins on the STM link as well. UART right. receiver pins that you can right. connect to. Fair. I don't see those on pins. The it's on the bottom side, somewhere on the bottom left. It's not marked over there, but if you look at the schematics, they will show you the schematics. I see. I see. So I'm okay. Somewhere here uh, on the this. STM link, you have to directly go into the chip. Yeah, oh, and sold it over here. I see. Okay, that's going to be a tricky uh, solder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
okay but uh, the good part will be then you don't need any external component right right otherwise what you are suggesting people will need to do is, is connect to uart converter right so they'll they'll all also be a converter required here that gets connected to their pc let's say yeah. and also you know i must mention that uh, what we'll do is just so that if people you know want to buy this board and follow along in future uh, we will provide a link to you know where people can buy this board from and also the connector yes uh, and of course people are free to search and buy it but if they buy it through the link uh, it will help the channel <laughs> so please <laughs> buy from the link yeah okay. if you consider uh, yes so uh, you, that comes to you at for spi uh, we have a mem sensor on board oh, mem nice. accelerometer yes what so, does this do you mentioned uh, so it can tell you accelerometer in different directions it's like a oscillations so does it tell you like the x y z component x y z direction uh, so if you move the board in direction in a plane it will uh, you can see that one of the planes changes for example oh, if nice. i let's say if i rotate if i move mm -hmm. like this then most probably i guess y and z are going to remain constant and x is mm -hmm. going to change while mm -hmm. if i rotate the x and y are going to remain constant and z is going to change and we will look at it nice so nice. you can use spi interface to talk to this accelerometer and get uh, xyz coordinates on a regular interval nice nice that sounds good and for i2c so when we talk about codec right so codec has two interfaces okay uh one interface is so codec has two interfaces one is control interface and one is data interface okay so when we talk about control interface, it's the codec internal register. So how you manipulate the codec internal register. Right. So that right. interface is connected to the I2C okay. of MCU. Okay. And the data interface as standard is connected to I2S. I see. I see. So this is where we'll jump into I2S. Yes. For advanced users. So, okay. And for basics, we will configure I2C to read and write to these registers. We'll show Understood. dummy read and dummy writes, and we will read the registers and configurations of the codec from it. Right, right. You know, reminds me. Does this uh, does this board also have like a temperature sensor on it, by any chance? There is an internal temperature sensor, I guess. I need to right. check. Sure, sure. Uh, so that is chips internal temperature sensor that is connected to the ADC directly. Mm, okay. Yeah. So pretty much in terms of like you know sensors and actuators i see that you know we can do something with spi uh, and you know read mems sensor uh, values and then maybe we can you know bring some leds here to convey which direction you know the user is moving or we can take the adc values based on the uh, temperature sensor and you know glow the leds accordingly to different yeah brightness. we can use that to generate sine waves just something like that so uh, something <laughs> yeah i i suppose the uh, again you know just to reiterate this looks like a very complete in itself kind of a board and hence you know makes a uh, makes for a very good choice uh, in terms of learning embedded programming like hands on uh, perfect cool i think uh, is there is there anything else that we want to convey or have we covered no. I guess we will cover each of the perspectives and more, more details when we do the actual demos. Nice. Okay, perfect. Then I think with this, then maybe we can, you know, uh, end the video here for today. And again, for those of you who, you know, stayed back, thank you. And hopefully, you know, you enjoy the future videos as much as we will do, uh, you know, producing them. So yeah, thank you for staying around and catch you guys next time. Bye-bye. Yep. Yeah.